Hello Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers. This is your mid-August love tarot and oracle reading. And you can apply this to whenever you're watching it if it's not mid-August, but let's dive into it. First, you have this card coming out. And this says playfulness. Laughter is the best therapy. Have some fun together and remember love is the greatest healer. So beautiful. I am seeing some flirtation, some playfulness. I'm seeing overall like Leo energy, getting out and flirting, getting out and doing something fun, like going to the movies or um, going to museums, coffee dates, things like that, like literally going out, even sporting events, going out and really having a fun time with people and maybe getting your little flirt on there. We have the full moon in Sagittarius. Look at the bigger picture. This is doubling down on that energy because I feel like Sagittarius is a very fun sign. And this shows viewing more world culture. So some of you guys might even be traveling. You might be um, just even flirting and talking with people who may be of different cultures, different mindsets, having deep conversations, helping each other expand spiritually through your conversations, through connecting on a deeper level with each other. Very, very beautiful. And then from the Romance Angels, we have passion. Yes, I love that. So, oh my gosh, so much fire energy for you at this time, Taurus. Oh my gosh. Like, I just see you going out, enjoying life, being around good people. And this is allow your heart and soul to sing with joy. Absolutely stunning. So when I view the word passion, especially coming from the romance angels, I, I view this as having really deep feelings for someone. And if you want someone to develop deep feelings for you, or if you want to connect with someone more on a deep level, because logically you know that they're a great person for you, but maybe the chemistry isn't there yet. One of my biggest recommendations would be to go out and experience more fun things with them, like more memories. If you have a partner, for example, and you literally never have gone on a date, you never go out, and that relationship is gonna be very unfulfilling because there's no core memories for you two to share with each other. So I think it's just so important to go on dates, even if you're single. Like, I, I'm just being honest, this is my perspective. I feel like even if you're single, it's so important to meet new people, even if it's just friendships, and um, just get to know life itself better, you know? So that's very stunning. Okay. We have the Knight of Swords. Oh my gosh. A lot of fast-moving energies. A lot of invitations out. I feel like someone's trying to move very, very quickly with you. Swoop in, have all these experiences, go all these places. Even if you're in a long-term relationship already, this could be some, like, that, your person, your partner. Um, I don't know, having this sort of existential crisis trying to travel all over the world with you because they're, quote-unquote, getting old or something like that. Um, or even if you're dating, it's like, I'm, I'm getting the presence of someone who wants to move things along very quickly. Like, you, you just start texting or talking and they're immediately like okay let's make a date like let's do this let's do that because they don't want to lose this opportunity and that's not necessarily a bad thing um if you guys are into quick moving love quick moving very passionate experiences then by all means this is the time for you we have the seven of wands yes i don't know why i'm seeing this message of learning how to flirt better giving pushback to people so it doesn't feel as friendly you know, especially if um, you're anybody who is like queer, lesbian, gay, it could sometimes be difficult to date because you may just feel very friendly, like friends hanging out with um, the people you have a crush on. And one of the things you can do to help that is to give a little pushback, a little banter, challenging their thoughts and ideas like, oh, really, you know, um, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I, I'm seeing that sense of flirtation there coming through. And it's it's from that sort of banter. It's from that resistance and not being 100% the same and doing everything professionally and friendly uh, that this fiery passion can really emerge. You know, it's like if you read any romance novel, a very common trope is enemies to lovers where they start out not liking each other, but then they end up like falling in love and having like the most steamy, 
passionate romance ever. And I feel like it's because that pushback against each other creates some sort of tension. I don't know. So yeah, a lot of fire energy, a lot of passionate energies here. Wow. Ace of Swords, new communication. I'm telling you, this is a great month for anyone who wants to start something fresh with someone new, okay? Um, going on new dates, um, moving forward. I'm also seeing conversations here. If you've been dating someone, I'm seeing conversations that are a bit deeper, um, pushing the relationship forward by doing new things together. Like, for example, if you've been dating someone for a few weeks and you want to get to a deeper level with them, there's multiple ways you could do this. Number one, just start doing things you've never done before. Like if you, for example, never went out to a restaurant to have dinner with each other, that's something you can do. If you've never met each other's friends, that's something you can do. If you've never had like a deeper discussion about something that you are maybe insecure about when it comes to your connection, that's something you can do. And all of these things may be a little bit nerve wracking. It might be a little bit, um, I don't know. You might be like about it, but <laughs> if that makes sense, um, but those are the things that make you more intimate and it helps you see each other in different environments, different lights. Even if you've been with someone for a long time, like have you actually been traveling with them? Have you seen them on the beach? Have you seen them, I don't know, staying in a hotel? Have you seen them as a parent? Have you seen them amongst their family members? You know what I mean? It's like there's so many different personalities locked away within every individual person and different people and environments and situations in our life bring out those alternative sides of ourselves. So one way you can get closer with somebody is to simply see them in new environments over and over and over again. Okay. Discussing new conversations over and over and over again. And that's like the beginning, middle and end of it. That's a relationship for you. So I am seeing that sort of trying to do that consciously. Queen of coins coming out in rivers. Taurus, this is your energy, uh, but the feminine energy may be feeling a little bit insecure within you, okay? Um, you may be needing commitment. You may find that you do better in connections and relationships where there's like agreed outlines as to what you are, where things are headed and what things are like. Also what I'm seeing here is like a bit of like greediness and I'm not saying this is from you. Um, it could be from you, <laughs> for some of you. Uh, look at to, look at the um, the give and take in your relationships. For example, like if you have a friend who's amazing, every time you hang out with each other, they show up with gifts for you. They're always the one like planning these hangouts, and you really love that. It is so important for you to make sure that you also are planning some hangout sessions and, and bringing some gifts and things like that to ensure the balance and harmony of your relationship because um, that can quickly build some resentment that can quickly lead to them not really wanting to put energy in. I think if there's something that you really enjoy in your life, if there is someone that you really enjoy in your life, it is so important to show them that you enjoy them through um, the love languages. And I believe that the love languages are real. However, the idea that we all only have one love language is BS. I think all five love languages are important to every single relationship we have. So that's words, words of affirmation, telling someone, I love you. I think you're great. You're beautiful. Very important. Okay. Quality time, literally just spending time with them. Important gift giving, celebrating the holidays, their birthdays, showing up with nice things from time to time, important in every relationship. What are the other ones? Physical affection, important in every relationship. And um, what was the other one? Gift giving, words, physical affection. Let me know in the comment section. Quality time. Why can't I? Acts of service, acts of service. That's the other one that is literally doing nice things. Like, oh, hey, uh, I know you're sick, so I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna help you like do the dishes and I'm gonna make you soup and stuff to help you out. You know, things like that. All of these are the guidelines on how to have thriving, healthy relationships. Okay. Look to yourself, do some introspective work and ask yourself, where can I improve upon these love languages in my friendships and relationships? Um, because when you become the partner that you want to have, you tend to attract that partner to you faster. And it's equally important to see how other people give to you. And if they're giving in all five of those ways, because if they're not, 
you shouldn't be giving to them in those ways either. And perhaps it's worth considering if it's like a good relationship for you. We have the moon coming out. Mm, yeah, a lot of deep subconscious emotions here. Deep emotions. I don't know why I want to talk to you about something. Uh, a memory from my mind that just popped up out of nowhere. Um, I used to date this person and they were really big on quality time. Um, like they, and physical touch, like they love just spending time with each other, um, snuggling and also acts of service. Like they would constantly cook me dinner and things like that. It was great. However, like they really struggled with, um, words of affirmation and explaining how they feel and letting me know that they love me, things like that. And they also struggled with gift giving and they basically said, listen, I'm not going to, uh, celebrate any holidays, like that's just not who I am, blah, 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 blah. And those two things literally caused me to break up because it's so awkward, like being on, like existing on Valentine's Day and you have someone you love and they just like completely ignore you and you're giving them gifts. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. I don't know why I wanted to share that story with you. Maybe some of you can resonate with that in your current relationship. If you're feeling, um, or even like a past relationship, if you're feeling like you are giving more than you are receiving or there's just something missing, you're not being too much. And if there's anyone in your life who makes you feel like you're too much, it's not that you're too much, it's just that they aren't enough, okay? And usually that's a sign that you should leave them and let them find somebody who, you know, can offer them less. Yeah. Or anybody who says, oh, your standards are too high. Okay. Go find someone with uh, lower standards. Cause that's the person who's compatible with you then. <laughs> what a comeback. You're too much. Your standards are too high. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you'll be more compatible with somebody who has lower standards. Eee! I never want to see a woman, a man, an anybody cry ever over somebody who makes them feel like they're not enough or they're doing too much rather or both really because you know oh man I, there's so many people in my life who I know feel this way they they hook up with somebody who is like emotionally unavailable and then they're made to feel like their love is too much like that feeling of oh am I being too much that confusion that the moon can oftentimes represent like oh am I too much should I like pull back a little bit if you are even having the slightest inclination of that feeling this person is not for you okay because that feeling is telling you that they are much better suited and compatible with somebody who has not done the work the effort, the, not somebody who has the intelligence and beauty that you have, you know, that person who's making you feel like you're too much, they're on a completely different level than you. And their level is much lower in terms of who they should be connecting with. You know, they should be connecting with people who don't give two craps about them. And I, I know that sounds awful to say, but like, that's what it is. Like if you're somebody who does not want to give that much in relationships, the types of friendships and relationships and, and partners you're going to attract are people who don't treat you like you're worth anything. Like they don't treat you kindly. And, and, I'm, and this could also be a self-reflective moment for some of you because you may be thinking to yourself, like, why do I keep hooking up with the wrong type of person um, who like never does enough? And it's like, are you doing enough? That's another thing you can think about. Are you making dates? Are you planning things? And you know, maybe both realities are true for a lot of you. Maybe in some connections, you are really fixated on that person. You do so much for them and they don't do anything back for you. And then on other connections in your life, like certain friendships, maybe you don't really give that much <laughs> and they do all of the giving. And it's like, let's like create balance and harmony in every connection in your life, you know? So yeah, definitely a lot of introspection, a lot of passion, a lot of balancing of the scales this month in your love life. We see new communication coming in. We see spiritual epiphanies and expansion that comes in through your relationships. Also a heckin' lot of fire, fiery, playful, flirtatious energy here. So really interesting stuff, Taurus. Definitely watch for your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs to get the fullest overview of your love life right now. Like this video, comment how it resonated down below, and subscribe to the channel if you've not already. If you want a personal reading with me one-on-one, -on -one, the link to that is always in the description box, spiritpsychic.org. I also offer my intention oils there and spiritual life coaching sessions there, so check it out. Bye-bye.